Well, hello and welcome and welcome and hello. My name is Danny Deals. You've tuned in to Un Poco Moss. Lucky you on a Friday, the show where we give you just a little bit more on behalf of Hurricane Lopez and Stock Karen. We would like to say welcome and hello, guys. It is August 11th, 2023. It's 9 a.m. out here in beautiful, sunny Los Angeles pushing the lunch hour out in NYC. Hope it's a great day wherever you are. Guys, today I would like to talk with you about the SoFi stock, ticker symbol S-O-F-I. Guys, um, the stock uh, gapped down to open at $8.53, since moved up, uh, back up a little bit on some uh, moderate volume algo trading. Uh, we did not see sort of the standard SoFi um mountain and hump pattern that sort of we did see that first peak um, that usually comes over the first 15 minutes today it only lasted five minutes um, then it sold off hard back down to uh, 844 a um, couple of these uh, high peaks but found some support uh, just under 850 um, back up more peaks appears to have found um some support again at 850 and then push back up in a controlled manner. And then we've had another steep gain here in the last few minutes. Um, again, guys, volume 15 million shares. Um, upstart up a little bit on the day, as is a firm. Some of the other growth stocks are basically flat. Uh, Palantir flat, uh, Robinhood flat, um, PayPal down just a fraction. Some of the credit card companies are mixed up and down. But anyway, guys, just wanted to um, give you a little bit of an update. Some, some people are kind of, you know, freaking out. They're like, oh, you said it wouldn't go below nine. Like you pinky swore. Guys, I, I'm don't don't be delusional. I'm, I'm a big SoFi bull. I like to be bullish. I like to be positive on SoFi. Um, I'm usually either buying or holding. Uh, it takes an extreme uh, event uh, that would make me want to sell SoFi, but um, I'm not seeing anything like that. I think the last uh, earnings report was solid. Again, I would give it a B because the growth was strong, but we did not move the needle at all on the earnings per share. Uh, it's been the same the last three quarters. That's due to additional dilution uh, through stock-based compensation. So even though um, you know EBITDA continues to increase, the uh, earnings per share has remained flat the last three quarters. However, um, when Noto and LaPointe present the math, they do um, indicate that by Q4, all the business segments are going to be contributing to the profit. Um, obviously the technology side has been, uh, lagging because SoFi has been investing heavily in that side and it has been the only, uh, division that has been losing money. Now, guys, looking at the chart, um, you can see the uptrend we've been concentrating on since, uh, the beginning of June that we've been trading in, hit the top, hit the bottom, back up, back down to the bottom, back to the top, back down. This is where we saw the massive two day, uh, pump and dump and then just a consistent sell-off. Um, I, I discount the pump and dump. I'm not trying to spot any downtrend um, there, but I do have to ask the question, um, are we in a new short-term downtrend? Because if you go back um, about the last three weeks, guys, you're gonna see um, this line that, uh, you know, Again, if you take off the pump and dump, um, there's just no question that since July uh, 17, the stock has been making um, lower lows. You see um, one here on July 20, another lower low July 21. Um, this is basically flat on the 24th, pretty much flat coming into the 26th, and then another lower low before uh, July 27. On July 27, you see the massive pump and then after the pump, it falls all the way back down to where it was basically um, just about, you know, fills the gap at this point, but then it just continues to sell off. So, you know, you could draw another, um, you know, trend line quite easily should it interest you, um, you know, and just come in here and do, you know, something like this. And again, this line is pretty good too. You have one, two, three, four, five. I won't call this a test, but six, seven. So you have seven data points where, um, you know, the price action is respecting this downward trend line. 
And then on this one, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least nine. So the, these trend lines that are in sort of a short term uh, downward trend on the, um, you know, lower highs, lower lows, um, they're coming into focus. I obviously don't want them to as a SoFi bull. I want the stock to go up. But again, we have to be realistic um, in our uh in our expectations, guys. Remember, the stock was just uh, March 15. We were just at, you know, $4.60 or something. Um, even as far as uh, June 1st, we were down at like six bucks. So that's the date the stock uh, took off and popped all the way up to seven. Um, so guys, this does not mean that the short-term or mid-term uptrend is over. Uh, this is what, you know, retracement uh, looks like this is what profit taking looks like and it could be the start of a downtrend and it could just be um, the start of some consolidation now the reason that I don't mind um, the stock coming down and breaking down below this aqua green trend line is because stocks kind of have a tendency um, to behave like physics um, in a certain sense. Everything does. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And if you put something on a teeter-totter or a lever and you put a, something heavy out on the extreme end, which is all these, you know, two days of, you know, a hundred and some million shares pumped and a hundred and some million shares dumped. When you put this kind of weight hanging out over the edge of the teeter-totter, I'm not going to be terribly surprised when this falls back down over the bottom, uh, you know, boundary line. It's just, this is how things work, guys. If you look at this point um, since June 1st, basically, even though there was one pump up here um, on uh, June 14, basically this has respected this, um, you know, this range that we're talking about, this very slow wedge. Um, but when it pops up here on, you know, July 31st and it goes just extremely far outside of this range. I mean, this, this candle tops out basically, it almost accounts for this entire trading range that we should be seeing at that point. So that was a big pump guys, a 20% pump on the SoFi stock. Um, it's not a stock that generally moves like that because it's not a stock that has, you know, epic news, epic growth. It is a very solid stock. It is a, a great long-term stock, but it's not the most exciting stock. We don't see, you know, revenues doubling. We don't see, you know, this huge membership ad, like say like it does, you know, like a Tesla or a new, or one of these companies where you have these sort of big dramatic, um, growth where, you know, you see, uh, the revenues double and triple in one year, um, like some of these companies. That that's not SoFi, guys. SoFi is set up to be a long-term free cash flow machine. They built their house out of bricks, and building that foundation uh, takes time. It takes money, but I believe over the long term you are going to be rewarded. Now, what what I get worried about is if the stock breaks down below sort of that 811, 813 level, um, this little blue line here. Um, I would like to see you know recovery to the green line and moving back up. Uh, in the absence of that, because you know the broader market has just been rough, I would like to see this um, you know sort of more modestly sloped. It's our most modestly priced receptacle. It's like, somebody's got rules. It's like, is there a Ralph's nearby? Like, you know, you put Donnie in a on in a uh, coffee can. It's just, uh, you know, there's just no justice in it. And um, anyway, Donnie, he loved the bowl. Good night, sweet prince. Anyway, um, guys, this blue line is a very realistic uh, picture of what could happen. Uh, but again, people are talking about, you know, I'm not delusional, guys. SoFi is not like an Apple or a Microsoft that has enough gravity that it can just completely buck off the market, guys. The market's been getting killed this week, and we're at least going down, uh, at least most growth stocks. And then SoFi, um, 
always tends to get hammered after earnings, tends to be a pump and dump. Sometimes that like last quarter, that pump kind of took place before earnings and there was just a massive dump this this quarter. Um, the media pumped the hell out of the uh, ER on the first day, how amazing it was. They pumped and dumped there and then it's just been selling off ever since. But guys, um, if we can sort of check up off this more modestly sloped trend line, and stop the bleeding somewhere above eight here. I think we continue to trade up and try to recover um, this trend line out here sometime in September. Obviously, what would be more favorable for uh, you know me as a SoFi investor and the ultra perma mega bull that I am is that if we get um, you know if we get some more recovery that just basically kind of looks more like this, but down here where it just gives us this dip and then, you know, we start moving back up. Um, this is, in other words, this would just be like an outlier of the data set that pushed down kind of in a reaction to this pushing up, which is often how things work with these charts. If it stays below on both sides, you could kind of respect the range. If it breaks out wildly on one side, it might just uh, break out wildly on the other side, but then everybody, you know, regains their composure. The market makers that ran the pump and dumps, they pushed it as low as they want to wring out all the profit they can out of the trade and then sort of more fundamental um, level-headed long-term uh, buyers come into the stock. Now, there's um, certain issues uh, with the SoFi stock. Um, the insider ownership with Noto is very high, but overall it's low. Um, the institutional ownership uh, remains fairly low. Guys, this is uh, from Seeking Alpha, August 10, 2023. This is a very, very long, detailed article, but I would highly recommend that you read it. Uh, it's by Philip Erickson. The Hunt for Potential 10x Returns. SoFi has strong product market fit but lacks high profitability and this is basically a model they use um, to score different stocks to say whether they think they're able to 10x in the next uh, 10 years of course with uh, SoFi that would mean going to a market cap near 90 billion dollars at the time of this article um, so he's running SoFi Technologies through the 10 bagger rating list. Um, SoFi Technologies uh, CEO Anthony Noto recently wrote, when I joined SoFi in February 2018, every fintech company said they wanted to be a one-stop shop. Now, five and a half years later, only SoFi has done it. Even the industry incumbents still haven't been able to put all of their products on a digital platform and become a one-stop shop. Does this leading neobank have the potential to give investors a 10x return? If you enjoy this analysis or are interested in the following companies, then check out our 10-bagger rating list. So this is basically a model that they go through. Um, they go through profitability, and they sort of um, have different ways they can measure that. Insider ownership, share repurchases, gross profit, intangibles. And then they go through sort of the rating levels um, that they assign to each of these metrics. And um, they give a score. Now, SoFi is a little bit... Um, difficult uh to score because it is still basically pre it's not basically it is still a pre-profit company on a gap basis um so they have to substitute in um you know certain things and sofi doesn't really report out their cost of goods sold in a normal manner um they so they use EBITDA and with some adjustments as a proxy. I'm not going to claim I understand all of these mechanics, guys. I'm certainly um, not a finance or, uh, you know, expert. I don't understand all of this, but I did read it all, and I highly encourage you to do the same. Um, return on invested capital, 23, 24 out of 50. Um, they're talking about, you know, how SoFi finances its business, the liability side of the balance sheet. 12 billion consumer deposits earning 3.86 on average. Furthermore, the company finance operations, 6.4 billion in debt, warehouse facility at 6%, securitized debt, uh, 900 million at 4.76, 1.76 in other debt at 3.29%. Uh, on the asset side, has 18.2 billion loans held for sale. Average interest rate is 10%, 1.6 in goodwill, as well as a smaller portion in tangible assets and capitalized software development. Hence, the interest on SoFi earns on its loans covers the interest it needs to pay depositors. In the last quarter, SoFi earned $402 million in interest on loans and paid $106 million in depositors. And guys, that spread is the key. Um, as they grow, they continue to originate uh, record numbers of loans. Um, you're going to see SoFi become profitable. It's just, 
it's just basic math, um, and they go through it all in uh, great detail. Um, deposits, interest paid, interest bearing assets, interest earned. So 9.96 versus 3.86. And that's where you get that 6% spread uh, Noto's talking about. He's like, listen, we're making 6% here. We could still make 4% profit, which is attractive uh, selling the loans. But um, that's why some of them are being held for sale and not already sold. But they did sell um, quite, a be quite a few, a couple billion dollars worth of loans in uh, Q2. And they did get very favorable uh, prices for those loans. In in sum, the company has invested capital 8.1, excluding restricted cash of uh, 400 million. And again, guys, I'm not going to try to go through all these numbers with you. I would just confuse myself, confuse you, but you can see how they compare to other um, companies on this 10 bagger list. And there are some other really good companies. Um, SoFi's operating profit has continued um, to improve. Their R&D expenditure uh, has increased. Um, amortization of R&D has increased, back-end R&D has decreased, um, net operating profit after tax um, has uh, decreased there in the last quarter. So, you know, he goes through this NOPAP model. Um, they use EBITDA, again, um, insider ownership. Uh, Anthony Noto has, um, you know, valued at $171 million um, worth of shares, a hefty compensation, his extensive experience. Um, they talk about the uh, founders have left SoFi and it's basically a whole new team. Um, share repurchases. Um, SoFi te Technologies outstanding shares have increased from around 800 million to 950 million. A lot of that was the result of the purchase of Galileo and Technesis. Um, so SoFi has been diluting shareholders about 9.25% per year for the last two years. This amount of dilution, although potentially well warranted, is uh, motivated him to rate the firm with a two out of 10 regarding share repurchases. Ouch, that hurts. Um, contribution profit margins. This is, um, you know, they get into SoFi does not report cost of goods sold, hence gross profit margin. Rather, the company reports contribution margin for each business unit, lending, technology, financial services. The contribution margin equals adjusted net revenue minus directly attributed cost spent to uh, generate that revenue. So it's a similar metric, but a little bit wonky. You know, SoFi likes to keep us completely confused about, no, not really, guys. It's, it's actually pretty simple. Lending has contributed contributed to over $3 billion in adjusted revenue over the past five years while costing uh, $1.8 billion. As you see more clearly below, lending was not a net contributor um, in 2018, but the business has scaled its margins immensely over time. Next is Tech Platform, which has earned a cumulative $605 million in adjusted revenue and 411 million cumulative costs. Um, in 2018-2019, the business earned less than $1 million in revenue. Uh, with the acquisition of Galileo, adjusted revenue increased to $96 million in 2020, $194 million in 2021. Finally, SoFi's uh, financial services segment is bleeding with expenses. SoFi has been investing heavily in this segment, but, but, but as of yet has not received any net contribution from it. Despite this, the segment's margin are increases exponentially, as we see below. Lending margins... Um, have grown incredibly from minus 46% to positive 60% over the past five years. The technology platform, on the other hand, is experiencing an inverse trend. The segment had 100% margins 2018-2019. As you mentioned, the adjusted net revenue was under 1 million at the time. Compared to 2020, SoFi acquired tech platform Galileo and later Technesis. From 2020 to 2022, the tech platform's margins have decreased from 56% to 24%. Again, not good, but that is because Technesis has uh, lower margins. Margins, I think, yeah, they're about to say. Galileo's higher margins in Technesis with the acquisition of in 2022, margins were pulled downward. For example, Q1 2023, tech platform's contribution margin, including excluding Technesis, was 28% and 19%. So that's a huge difference. Technesis has been a uh, downward draw on the margins there, and there's just no question about it. Um, another reason for the declining margins, the CI set, CEO said, sequentially, revenue and contribution profit declined in the tech platform due to seasonality and transaction volumes along with timing implications from shifting focus to larger potential partners with larger existing businesses, B2B customers and more durable customer base, which has longer sales cycles. So guys, they're basically doing a whole revamp on the Galileo side in terms of what uh, type of customers they're targeting. They're going after larger, uh, bigger fish with uh, more accounts, more existing customers, so they don't have to build up all these tiny accounts uh, from scratch. So 
when moving from acquisition to scaling a platform is natural to sacrifice margins for longer lasting larger customers and that's kind of what they're doing separately i've included the contribution margin for the financial services segment because it's a completely different scale compared to the other segments in its trough through 2019 so if i was spending 30x more on financial services than it was earnings in 2022 that same ratio is 2.2 so guys they basically started this financial services thing completely from scratch and if you look at that ratio it was er, it was spending 30 times more than it earned just in 2019 and in 2022 it was only 2.2 times what it earned that's still negative but it's an incredible incredible change from 30x to 2.2x in only 3 years sofi clearly has a history of investing heavily and then earning outsized profits in the future for lending and tech platform business these investments have already paid off furthermore the financial services segment is close to delivering a positive contribution margin due to this performance i rate the company a 10 out of 10 with regard to contribution margin. Um, intangibles, uh, company culture, based on 809 ratings, they they got 8.7 out of 10. Um, Noto scores high. I like best about the leadership team that they run after problems. Nothing is too big or too small for leadership to take accountability for, and they're always open to suggestions and constantly improving. Other management is being ambitious and responsible. They seem to give employees autonomy. It does lead to a stressful work environment, but they push their people hard, and they compensate them very well, and they expect them to perform and um, do so independently and motivate themselves. The values listed are far from generic. First and more important um, value for the customer facing Neobank is put our members' interests first. That's a key mantra for gaining customers' loyalty. Other core values centered around selflessness and results. Make your footprint bigger than your foot. Do the right thing. If you're not sure, do the harder thing. These values guide employees to take on hard projects without boasting about them. Um, this is the culture you want, guys. All hands on deck. Everybody's in the same boat. All this stock and options they own. Um, it makes them want to make SoFi succeed. Their interests align with our interests. And um, yes, it is a lot of uh, stock-based compensation, but we just have to see. Time will tell if it's worth it. If management continues to execute, the business model works. Uh, the cross-selling develops, all the costs go down, the stock-based comp compensation goes down as a ratio of both, you know, EBITDA and revenue and ultimately net profit, you know, everything's going to be fine, but you need to continue to execute. Um, industry growth rate, the consensus estimate uh, for SoFi implies it'll grow its revenue to year-end 2027, 20, um, CAGR of 23%. This may be considered reasonable considering the company's CAGR of 41% between 2018 and 2022 in order to better gauge these estimates are reasonable. We should look to project a growth rate for varying uh, low volume for various uh, loan volumes. Out of all the customer debt, the majority is made up of mortgage loans, student auto loans, being up around nine percent. Finally, credit card and other personal debt. Basically, it shows you know mortgage is the massive amount of uh, debt. Consumer debt projection, or to simplify the projected growth rate, we know household debt as a percentage of GDP has fluctuated between seventy four and eighty two percent over the past ten years. If we assume GDP growth rate around two percent, we can make a relatively accurate prediction of different outcomes of total household debt over time so basically they go through the rent and uh or the um you know what they think debt levels will be for the country and how this could relate to sofi it's a fascinating read guys but again i i read this i can't go through um you know every single bit of it but basically operating leverage um SoFi has a history of driving leverage with its businesses. However, this hasn't been reflected in the company's operating income. Over the past five years, operating expenses have grown in tandem with revenue. In fact, it hasn't been until trailing 12 months that revenue has begun to close in on OPEC. SoFi has needed heavy investment in order to grow its customer base, which now stands at 6.2 million. Guys, that is one of the negatives. SoFi has paid a lot for the customer growth. Um, that's why the company is basically not making a profit. They've also paid a lot in terms, again, of stock-based compensation. So both on the inside and the outside, um, SoFi is paying a lot for the growth. And um, while their gross margins are good and, in, and I think they're going to get better, um, we just need to get profit to the bottom line. That comes with scaling. That comes with cost controls. Um, that comes with responsible growth. Um, and not just, you know, you want growth. It is a growth stock, but not growth at all costs. We need to drive cross-selling uh, more effectively. We need uh, better revenues per product, better revenues per member. And that's why, you know, when we talk about, oh, a lot of these members are just uh, relay customers or just credit score customers, that, that, that may be the case in terms of aggregate numbers, but you also have to look at the most important thing, deposits and direct deposits on the banking side, loan originations on the lending side, and then 
Galileo, Technesis, are they adding these big customers we're talking about? When are we going to see those announcements? When are we going to see the actual um, contract and that revenue hit the bottom line? I would like to see in the next four quarters um, some of these big fish actually being landed. I don't just want to talk about we're talking to big customers. You know, I'm in a windbreaker and we've achieved record adjusted EBITDA. And I talked to several other executives in a men's restroom when we were blow drying our hands on that, uh, you know, Dyson blade. And I'll just tell you, I got a little bit of spatter on my windbreaker, but I was able to take the rest of the excess moisture and just quaff my hair just so before we came out to this golf course for, you know, another interview where I talk about our adjusted net revenues. But we're just not making any money. We're paying ourselves a goddamn fortune. But you know, I am well Botoxed and I have a couple hundred million in stock that uh, I largely didn't pay for. But guys, I'm just kidding. I love Anthony Noto. But seriously, make some fucking profit already, you slick motherfucker. Um, no, I love you, Anthony. Call me. Um, get, get the fucking uh, proper trading platform up already. It's ridiculous. Um, so guys, in relation to SoFi's main lending business, financial services business has grown dramatically from a product ratio 2.7x in 2021 to 5.3x in 2023. This reflects the company's successful positioning as a one-stop shop in consumer finance. Although I'm optimistic about this trend continuing, I am less optimistic about SoFi's ability to monetize the financial services segment. And this is difficult, guys, because... Some things like people are getting used to getting for free, you know, trading stocks, trading options, um, all this stuff like they they don't want to pay for this stuff. Banking, if you're giving high interest rates, you're giving they're going to get used to that high interest rate. So, you know, a lot of this stuff is kind of cyclical and I think SoFi is doing extremely well, but they, again, they have to prove they can make profits from these things. It's not enough just to grow. Yes, right now growth is extremely important and I would prioritize growth over earnings per share, but you still have to prove at the end of the day, you can make money. 10 bagger rating and seeking alpha quant map. Um, Guys, this shows the equant of 3.44 uh, above 5. The rating map in this analysis, I find Block scores a record of 23.7 on the 10-bagger scale um, and 3.44. Um, acknowledges SoFi's incredible growth, as I pointed out. Uh, I think it meant SoFi. Furthermore, the quant rating, I just forgot to edit out Block. The fact that profitability has been a problem for a long while. This is set to turn already in Q4 of this year. And further operating leverage will be drawn from financial services loop. SoFi scores the lowest so far on the 10 bagger list due to its weak profitability, share dilution, low insider ownership. However, in order to hit holistically view the company, we need to look into valuation below. And this is key, guys. As opposed to other companies I've evaluated, SoFi does not have ordinary cash flow dynamics, and they go through kind of the uh, metrics here. Um, so uh, they use a proxy for free cash flows and you know they go through it all in order to justify its current valuation sofi needs to grow its free cash flow proxy adjusted ebitda capex by 24.3 percent over the next 10 years i believe this is doable in the long runway for growth and that the comp what excuse me let me read that i believe this is doable given the long runway for growth that the company has another way to think about it is that sofi could grow cash flows by 12 percent over the next 20 years does that seem reasonable. In the most recent quarter, SoFi disclosed that it ex expects to achieve four, uh, $343 million in adjusted EBITDA for 2023, which represents a 340% growth compared to 2022. The scaling of SoFi and the shift toward profitability make me believe the current valuation is in line or even low compared to long-term expectations. But SoFi is the lowest rated company on the 10-bagger list, scoring 23.7 uh, out of 50, which motivates me to rate the company a hold for the time being. It is important to mention the score is by no means a proxy for SoFi's future performance, but rather a reflection of the company's performance within the set of confines that could explain multi-bagger returns. So guys, that is um, an interesting uh, little read there. Uh, no new ratings um, coming out on uh, the SoFi stock that I have uh, seen. Yeah, Mizuho at 15 and then uh, JP Morgan upgrading to 8 and again, I think, um, you know, the Chode at Credit Suisse at 950, Morgan Stanley still at 7, 
Um, so guys, these are all the ratings. I do like actually JP Morgan raising their target from uh, six to eight, considering they are the leading bank in the country. They have every reason to beat Sophia, but I think they also want to uh, maintain uh, credibility. So guys, um, taking a look at the uh, daily short interest, um, Basically, the short has remained pretty flat here at around 14%. We're still there. Um, free float on loan continues to go down, as does shares on loan, days to cover, cost to bar on utilization. Utilization is all the way down to uh, one day. Let's take a look at the live short interest for the day. Net borrowed change, minus 500,000. Um, return shares 1.7, borrowed 1.2, so net borrowed change minus half a million. Cost to borrow max a little bit higher than usual, uh, pushing 3%. So it's really hard to tell, guys, um, what's going on with this uh, short interest all the time because, you know, it looks like short long hedging. Um, short long activity by hedge funds because um, you know shares on loan have gone all the way down from like 200 some million to just uh, 76 million um, over the last several months and then um, the estimated short interest of free float is still um, holding at 15 percent so those data points don't really make a lot of sense unless um, a lot of companies are heavily short long and hedging with uh, these uh, short positions with shares they already own. So guys, that's uh, the SoFi stock. The ticker symbol is SOFI. Let's take a look at where we are at the MO. Um, we're at $8.59, down 14% or 1.55% on the day. Um, taking a look at this fantastic uh, one-day chart to uh, see where we stand. Um, of course, my stupid computer doesn't want to cooperate. What else is new? But... Um, Anyway, guys, I don't know what this thing's doing. Um, it's struggling as am I. But guys, it's the SoFi stock. Uh, ticker symbol is SOFI. Um, the chart is basically going um, upwards and sideways today, basically the opposite of what it was doing yesterday, which just sold off Algo on a flatliner downward all day. So um, today kind of started off down there below 850 and has been uh, just kind of going upward to the right in this very... Uh, jagged crazy pattern so guys it's a sofi stock ticker symbol sofi it's august 11 2023 9 30 a.m out here in los angeles volume has been uh, pretty slow on the day at 16 million shares but we'll just have to see what happens um obviously options are you know deader than dead um even the 850s they killed and there was some volume left out there but basically all the options have been closed out and i think probably uh you know, just hedging and a few uh, retail boobs in there. But anyway, guys, it's a SoFi stock. Ticker symbol is SOFI. Let me know what you think is going to happen down in the comments. Uh, are we going to regain the uh, upward channel? Are we going to slip from a short-term downward uh, trend into a mid-term downward trend and continue to bleed down toward eight bucks, guys? Time will tell. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Friday and a great weekend. Uh, my name's Danny Deals for Un Poco Moss, the show where we give you just a little bit more. I'd like to thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.